Uh, already, good. Well, first of all, Shabbat Shalom. Second of all, Kach Sameach, Shavuot. It is again for me an absolutely just magnificent occasion to be back at in, in real life on at, at Temple Israel Hilbra. And uh, Martin, wow, absolutely. Wow. So, you know, Hashem is so good to us. Faced with all our challenges that we have, COVID-19, this horrific Ukraine-Russian war, which is in our hearts all the time, and also the challenges of being in Hilbra, which are wonderful challenges. And here we are, and each Shabbat morning, uh, Marion, how many mornings have we been open now? A month? About. And each Shabbat morning, we have another new friend of Temple Israel, Hilbra, all congregants joining us. And may I welcome Peter and her brother, wonderful friends from our sister congregation, Beit Emanuel, and all the great people who joined us today. And each day, you're right. We're getting a new congregant and friend of Temple Israel. So without further ado, we are honored, as usual, to have Lael Bethlehem, who really is the educational backbone, the educational Jewish backbone of Temple Israel Hilbra. And we learn so much. And Lael, we are thrilled that you can take our, may I call it Shabbat, pre Shavuot service and lead us through it. So thank you and Shabbat Shalom and Hach Sameach again. Lel, over to you. Thank you very much, Rita. Shabbat Shalom, everybody, and Hach Sameach. And really wonderful to be in the shul, to see everybody here physically in the shul. Um, Peter was saying she hasn't been here for maybe 20 years. <laughs> and wonderful that you're here, Peter, together with your brother. Welcome. There are a few other faces that I don't know, but you are all very welcome, and I'm very, very happy and honored uh, to be among you. Um, I also want to say that here we have in the shul a minion. Uh, you know, we would still count the minion even if it was only on Zoom, but even here today on a rather cold Johannesburg uh, morning, uh, we also have a minion here. In the and shul. may I dare say, we might also have a minion on Zoom. Right. So welcome we to blessed. all our friends and congregants on Zoom. So everybody, so today is in fact the last day of the counting of the Omer. It is in fact the day before Shavuot. Tonight is Shavuot. Um, and uh, because we are a little constrained in our shul, uh, rather than having a, a Shabbat morning service today and another service tomorrow, what we are going to do is we're going to kind of combine the two services. Um, so I thought it's better not to do a full Shavuot service because it's a bit odd to do that when it isn't actually the Chag. Um, uh, and today is in fact uh, still uh, the last day of the Omer. Um, so what I think we are going to do is to do our normal Shabbat morning service. And instead of reading the usual Parsha for today, which is in fact Parshat Bamidbar, um, uh, which is in fact the first book, uh, the, the, the first parsha, uh, the first chapter <coughs> of Bamidbar. Uh, but it, in, instead of reading that, we are going to read the Shavuot parsha, which is the giving of the Ten Commandments, the giving of the Torah. Uh, but we won't do the Halal and the other things for Shavuot, uh, but we will have the opportunity to join the SAUPJ service on Zoom tomorrow or in person tomorrow at Beit Emanuel. So there is a service tomorrow at Beit Emanuel for Shavuot first day, uh, and the, uh, that will be uh, on Zoom. Uh, and tonight we'll still do our mincha, uh, which will then lead into Shavuot. And those who want to join a Shavuot service tonight can also do so. I think there is also at Beit Emanuel tonight what's called a Tikkun Leil Shavuot, which is uh, where there's a, a study session, because it is, of course, uh, a traditional uh, to study on uh, Shavuot. Um, so today we are going to do aspects, let me put it that way, of the Shavuot service, uh, and then we'll invite everybody to join our sister congregations as well. Uh, so for now, we are going to start 
uh, with our uh, Shabbat morning service. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the festival morning service that's on page 420, just so that we can acknowledge uh, Shavuot uh, as we go along. But just noting that, in fact, today is not quite yet Shavuot. Uh, tomorrow morning uh, is, in fact, uh, the first day of Shavuot. So on page 418, Israel. <laughs> Mishknotecha Yisrael, Vaani Berov Chatzdecha, Avo Avo Beitecha, Eshtachave, Eshtachave, El Hecha Al Kotchecha, Beirahatecha, Aneni Beemet. On page 420, we go on to the, uh, uh, to the usual readings, which are in fact readings of weekdays, as well as Shabbat, as well as Chag. Uh, and as you'll see, the service for Shavuot is really just the usual service for Shabbat, uh, but with a couple of uh, additions. Um, so I hope everybody is, is everybody okay, page 420? Page 420, okay. So this is truly one of the most beautiful uh, prayers of our liturgy. And I always uh, feel that um, uh, honestly, uh, if one doesn't know any other prayer, but one simply knows the prayers on page 421, uh, 420 and 422, then you know one has already made a very good start. These are really two of the most beautiful prayers of the entire Jewish liturgy. And what are they? They are prayers of thanks to God. Thanks for the human body. That's the first one we read on page 420. We are thanking God for the wonder of the human body. And as we all inhabit a human body, we all know the extraordinariness of the human body, our ability to heal, our ability to move, our ability to think. These are gifts given to us by Hashem. And then on page 422, we give thanks for the neshama uh, in really, truly one of the most beautiful passages uh, of Jewish liturgy. So let's start on page 420. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher yatsar et haadam bechokma uvarav o nekavim nekavim chalulim chalulim galui viadeh lifnei kisei kvodecha shemifatech echad mehem o yesatem echad mehem I have Charlie hit Kayem Vela Amod Lafanecha, Baruch Ata Adonai, Rofe Kol Basar, Uma Flila Asot. On page 422. So, this is a prayer that we have studied a couple of times in our, in our lessons, uh, in our Jewish education series. Um, welcome, welcome. And um, it is a, a very interesting prayer because a line of it, which is in the traditional prayer book, has been omitted in the reform prayer book. And I think it is a line that we should put back. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this prayer, which I really can recommend that everybody recites every morning. It's a beautiful prayer to recite every day. Uh, and let me read it to you in English and I will add in the missing line. My God, the soul you have given me is pure. You created it, you shaped it, you breathed it into me, and you protect it within me. And here's the missing line. And one day, God, you will take it from me and return it to me in another dimension. So this is an acknowledgement that life on earth is not forever that we do not live forever. No matter the wonder of our bodies, in the end we die. The soul is taken from us by God. But then, says the, the prayer in the Hebrew, and you will in the future take it from me. And you will return it to me in a future yet to come. 
to come back to the English. For as long as my soul is within me, I offer thanks to you, eternal my God and God of my ancestors, source of all creation, sovereign of all souls. Blessed are you, eternal one, in whose hand is every living soul and the breath of humankind. In Hebrew, Elohai neshama shenatata bi tehorahi atavarata atayatsarta atana fachta bi ve ata meshamra bakir bi kol zman shenashama bakir bi moda anil fanecha adonai elohai velohe avotai ve imotai ribon kol hamasim adon kol haneshamot baruch ata adonai asher ve yadon nefesh kol chai. <laughs> now I'm going to pray that again, and this time I'm going to add in the additional line. Eloha in the Shamashana Tata Bite Horahi Atavarata Atayat Sarta Atana Fachta Biva Atama Sham Rabakir B. Vata Atid Lati Lami Meni Leha Hazi Rabi La Atid Lavo. So just to dwell a little bit, because today is the day before Shavuot, and the emphasis is on learning, learning together. Let's just think about that first line and about what it means to recite that line to God every morning. Elohai neshama shenatata bi tehorahi. O God, the soul that you have given me is pure. So let's think about what it means to acknowledge the purity of our neshama. Each of us acknowledges that we have within us a soul, a neshama, that is given to us by God. And that that neshama is pure. So that means that in the way that we live our lives, we need to honor the purity of the neshama. And we need to magnify the neshama. And we need to give it space. And we need to take responsibility for the development and growth of the soul. And if the soul that God has given us is pure, then we need to behave in a way that honors that soul. If we say, God, you have given me a pure soul and put it within me, how, do, how would I then go around in my life doing things which bring dishonor to my own soul? Surely, once we acknowledge the purity of the neshama, we then must behave in ways that honor the purity of the neshama that God has given us and that magnify the light within, partly through our own spiritual journey and partly through the way in which we uh, uh, behave towards others. And then it is also, you know, a meditation, this prayer on gratitude. We say, for as long as my soul is within me, I offer thanks to you, eternal my God, and God of my ancestors, source of all creation, sovereign of all souls. So it is in, uh, in a way that we often do in Jewish life, an acknowledgement of the preciousness of life, that we don't take life for granted. We don't pretend it lasts forever. We say, one day, God, you will take my soul from me. I know. Life is not forever. And so we say, Thank you that I'm alive. Thank you that you've breathed life into me. Thank you that you have given me a pure soul. And for as long as my soul is within me, I will give thanks to you, O oh God, and I will honor, I will work to honor the soul that you have given me. From there we go on to the brachot, nisim shel kol yom, the daily brachot on page 424. The English is written there. Is the sound okay, Jacob? Yeah. The sound okay? Uh, so we are doing the, the daily brachot. Uh, uh, the, the English is written there. Because we've got a lot to do today, I won't go through the English each time. I'll just chant in Hebrew. Please answer amen. And please uh, read the English uh, as we go along. These are the things that we thank God for every day. 
ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לשיח ויבינה להבחין בין יום ובין לילה. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם פוקח עברים. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם מתיר אסורים. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם זוקף כפופים. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם רוקה הארץ על המים. And now on page 426. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם המכין מצעדי גבר. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם מלביש ערומים. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם הנותן ליעף כוח. So let's just pause on that one for a moment. I give thanks to you, O God and God of my ancestors. who gives strength to the weary. We know that sometimes we are weary. Sometimes we are tired. And we also know that God gives strength to those who are tired. That we are given the Shabbat for rest, that we are given spiritual resources. So next time you are feeling just weary to the bone. This is a wonderful bracha. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hanoten We thank you, our God and God of our ancestors, who gives strength to those who are weary. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, hama'avir shena me'enai, utemuna me'af apai. Top of page 428. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, she'asani b'tselem Elohim. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם שעשה אני בת חורין. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם שעשה אני ישראל. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם עוזר ישראל בגבורה. ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם עוטר ישראל בתפארה. At the top of page 430, that in fact concludes the, the daily blessings. And what we do now is we say a very interesting blessing. We say, we say to God, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu la'asok b'divrei Torah. Top of page 430. We bless you, eternal our God, the sovereign of the universe, of the universe who makes us holy with your mitzvot and commands us to engage with the words of Torah. So why do we say that blessing? We say that blessing because we are about to engage with the words of Torah. So what we do now every Shabbat and every Chag is we, we study a little bit, we learn a little bit together. Uh, and the way it's set up in our Siddur is that um, we learn from a couple of passages that are set out on page 432 and 433. So that's why we say that blessing now. because we are about to study a little bit of Torah. Now in Jewish life, when we say Torah, we actually don't only mean the Torah itself. We, we mean all the sacred works. So that includes uh, the Talmud. It includes the oral tradition. It includes the works, for example, of uh, Moses Maimonides, one of our great sages. It includes the work of all uh, of our uh, sages. Um, so that's why we uh, recite that uh, that particular bracha now. And we then go on to say, turn our God, let the words of Torah be sweet in our mouths and the mouths of your people Israel, so that we and our descendants and the descendants of all your people Israel may know you by studying your Torah for its own sake. Blessed are you eternal one who teaches Torah to your people Israel. Baruch atah Adonai, hamlamed Torah le'amo Yisrael. So now we are on page 432, and now we are going to learn together uh, two passages. Um, both of them are from uh, the rabbinic texts, uh, and they are both uh, passages which try to, um, which try to um, help us to understand the essence of Torah. They try to distill, that's the word I was looking for, they try to distill the essence of Torah. And these are the two of them. And I'm going to ask those who are present in the shul to read with me in English, the middle of page 432. These 
are the obligations without measure, which enhance our world while building credit in the world to come. They are honoring one's father and mother, engaging in deeds of compassion, arriving early for study morning and evening, dealing graciously with guests, visiting the sick, providing for the wedding couple, accompanying the dead for burial, being devoted in prayer and making peace among people. And the study of Torah encompasses them all. So really what that is about is about trying to distill, what, what, what is the minimum? What are the things we really should do? And these are called obligations without measure. So it's not that if you did it once, then you know, you, you're off the hook. Uh, these are things that we do, that we continue to do all of our lives. And, and the obligation is, is for all of our lives. So one of them, it says, is engaging in deeds of compassion, um, which in Hebrew is gemilut chasadim. So deeds of compassion uh, are, it's an interesting term, isn't it? Because compassion is a feeling. Compassion is what we feel for our fellow humans, or in fact, we can feel also for animals or for the earth. But we are not just told to have compassion, to feel it. We are told, gemilut chasadim, deeds of compassion. In other words, the compassion needs to translate into action. That is gemilut chasadim, when the compassion translates into action. Like we have here at Temple Israel on a Thursday morning, a most wonderful tikkun olam, Marian and others who join her uh, every week, handing out food, this week also clothing and blankets. Uh, you know, we started off, I don't know, many years ago, many years ago, with uh, Shabbat morning, handing out bread and groceries. Now it's Thursday morning. It started off literally with a handful of people who are coming for food. And now it's up this to week we, we had partners, the Union, Union of, of Jewish, Jewish Women came along. And the city of Joburg protected. And the city of Joburg River has organized absolutely marvelous that they come and help because we really need that help. Um, so this week uh, I heard from Marion was about three, 300 people as it is now every week. Th that's a lot of people for two small congregations to feed every week. But that is an example of Gemilut Chasadim. There are deeds of compassion. It's not just that we should drive past a homeless person and say, I, I feel for you. It's that we should try to do something. Uh, or to put it in another way, I saw a very beautiful uh, quote from the Dalai Lama who had the following to say. He says, um, if we see a person stuck underneath a rock, our task is not to get under the rock and feel the pain with him. Our task is to remove the rock. So says the Dalai Lama, these are gemilut chasadim, these are the obligations without measure as we learn uh, from our own uh, Jewish texts. We go on to another Jewish text, page 433 in the middle. And this is a very famous text, very beloved of our shul, uh, also reflecting uh, on the giving of tzedakah. Uh, we know that the word tzedakah uh, is an interesting word because it comes from the word tzedek. Tzedek means righteousness, but it also means justice. So for us as Jews, it's a bit different from the English idea of charity. The word charity in English kind of denotes that you kind of doing someone a favor. In Hebrew, tzedakah, justice. You can hear that if you are doing acts of justice, then you understand that you have an obligation, that there's a responsibility. It's that you are writing an injustice. It is unjust when people are homeless. And so you are not just doing a favor out of the goodness of your heart. In, in, in fact, you are doing what is required of you. When the Torah says, tzedek, 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 justice, justice, shall you pursue? And what does, it, uh, what does the Torah say? Not just justice, justice, shall you pursue. The full verse is, tzedek, 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 l'ma'an tichyeh. Justice, justice, shall you pursue so that you may live. So the idea is that if you want to live, what kind of life is it if you only ever look after yourself? 
Tzedek 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 Laman Tzedek You want to have a life? Then pursue justice. So it says Maimonides, these are the eight degrees in the giving of tzedakah, each one higher than the one before. The first one, to give grudgingly, reluctantly, or with regret. So you give somebody something, but you, you know, you, you, you kind of make it clear to them that, that, that you wish you didn't have to. You feel, you, you feel reluctant. You, you feel grudging, even as you carry out uh, the act. You, you, you regret it as soon as you've done it. It's still tzedakah. You still help somebody. But it's the first level. Second level, to give less than one should, but with grace. The third level, to give what one should, but only after being asked. The fourth, to give before one is asked. The fifth, to give without knowing who will receive it, although the recipient knows the identity of the giver. To give without making known one's identity. To give so that neither given nor receiver knows the identity of the other. To help another to become self-supporting by means of a gift alone, or by finding employment for the one in need, that indeed is the highest level in the giving of tzedakah. <coughs> so says uh, Moses Maimonides. And so now we have studied a little bit. Uh, <coughs> we have studied a little bit of uh, Jewish texts, uh, and we go on uh, from there uh, to one more text on page 437, which we don't normally do, but which is a, a beautiful text, I think. So this is a text of, uh, of Chaim Stern. Chaim Stern asks this question, why should prayers be fixed? You know, we as Jews, it's different from many other religions. The time of prayer is fixed. What we pray is fixed. And we, we pray the same thing every day. We don't just wake up and, and say whatever comes to our mind. We can do that as well. But our prayers are fixed. Why? Why well, ask Chaim Stern? To learn what we should value what we should pray for, to be at one with our people, the household of Israel, because we are all praying for the same thing, to ensure that the ideals painfully learned and purified for which many have lived and died shall not perish from the community and shall have a saving influence upon the individual. This is the reason that we have our fixed prayers. So we have now done the first part of the Siddur. We have uh, prayed the morning blessings we have also engaged in the study of Torah, particularly important on Erev Shavuot, but important indeed every week, every day. From there we go on to the second section, which is called Pesuke de Zimra on page 438. Pesuke de Zimra means the verses of praise. So these are the praises that we say every day. Indeed, we are commanded that uh, every day we should engage in praise of God. And some are specific for the Shabbat, whereas some are uh, more general uh, praises of God. And I'd like to start with one that is specific for Shabbat, since it is Shabbat today, on page 441, which is Mizmo Shir Leyom Shabbat, Psalm 92. Those of you who know the psalm, please feel free to join in. Mm, this is page 441. Mizmo Shir Leyom HaShabbat Tov Lehodot Ladonai Ule zamer le shimcha elion, ule zamer le shimcha elion, le hagid babo ker chas decha, ve emu natcha balelot, ale. Shabbat tov lehodot la Adonai ule zamer le shimcha elion ule zamer le shimcha elion kisi machtani Adonai befolecha bemaase yadecha Thank you. 
ובוצחה. מזמור שיר ליום השבת, טוב להודות לאדוני ולזמר לשמך עליון ולזמר לשמך עליון. From there we go on to uh, uh, another beautiful uh, part of the Pesuke at the Zimra on page 446. Um, the Nishmat Kol Chai. And this, I think, is a very, very beautiful, um, a very beautiful passage and one which is really lovely uh, to learn together. Let's just uh, read it first. I'll sing it as well. But let's see if we can just get to understand it a little bit. Page 446. Nishmat Kol Chai, Tivarech et Shimcha Adonai Eloheinu, Beruach Kol Basar, Tifa'er, Utromem Zechrecha Malkenu, תמיד, מן העולם ועד העולם אתה אל, אין לנו מלך אלא אתה. אל הראשונים והאחרונים, אלוה כל בריאות, אדון כל תולדות המהולל ברוב התשפחות, המנהג עולמו בחסד ובריאותיו ברחמים, ואדוני לא ינום ולא יישן, המעורר ישנים והמקיץ נרדמים, והמציח אל מים, והמתיר אסורים, והסומך נופלים, והזוקף כפופים, לך, לבדך, אנחנו מודים. May the soul of everything that is alive praise your name, eternal our God. And the spirit of all flesh glorify and exalt your name forever. You transcend space and time. You are forever. You alone are God. We have no sovereign besides you. Here comes a beautiful passage. Elohe harishonim v'ha'achronim. You are the God of the first and the last. What is the first and the last? Well, we may believe in our earthly world that there are some people that are more elevated than others. Some that are more important, some that are better known, some that have power, some that have riches. You may think of them as the first. You may think of others as the last. God doesn't. God of the first and the last. God of each person. God is equally God to each person. Never mind what they have on this earth. Money, power, None of it matters. All are the same in the sight of God. Elohe, harishonim, v'ha'achronim, Eloha kol briot, the God of all creatures. How do we treat others, animals, insects, birds, fish, humans, knowing that God is God of us all? Eloha kol briot, God of all creatures. God of all generations, who is praised in a multitude of praises, who guides the world with abundant loving kindness and all creatures with mercy. God neither slumbers nor sleeps. In fact, God, God awakens the sleeper, arouses those who slumber, gives speech to the mute, loosens the bonds of the captive, supports the fallen, strengthens those who are bent over. You alone do we acknowledge. <clears throat> and here's the beautiful melody that goes with it. <clears throat> Nishmat kol chai, tevarech et shimcha, Adonai Eloheinu, Veruach kol basar, tefa'er utromem, Zichrecha malke, Let the soul of everything alive bless your name, eternal. Our God. 
And then we go on. We go on to page 450 at the bottom to a beautiful bracha. Baruch Adonai, El Melech Gadol Batishbachot, El Hahoraot Adon Haniflaot, Habocher Beshire Zimra, Melech El Che Haolamim. We praise you, our God, sovereign of wonders, crowned in glory, delighting in song. You are the eternal majesty. You are the God who is praised in a multitude of praises. And in order to complete the first part, of the service and to then mark that we are going on to the second part, which is the Shema and its blessings, starting off with the Baruch Hu. We ask you to rise as we recite the Chatzit Kaddish on page 451. So we recite together the Chatsi Kaddish. It Kadav it Kaddash me Rabba be al Mari Vracher Tevim Lich Malchute be Chaye Chonu be Mechonu be Chaye de Chol Beit Yisrael be Galau Bisman Kari ve Meru Amen Yehesherem Barach Lolam Lo Me Omaya Yit Barach Bish Tabach Bit Pavit Ram Bit Nase Bit Hadar Bit Alev Bit Alal Shmed Kudosh Abrichu Le Elam In Kover Chata Veshira Tachus Be Chata Ve Nechemata Da Amiran Be Alma. The Imeru Amen. The second part of the service, the Shema and its blessing, starts off on page 452. You may be seated on page 454, a beautiful passage that thanks God. For the sunlight, that thanks God for nature, that thanks God for the wonders of the natural world. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, yotzer or uvore choshech, ose shalom uvore et hakol. Hameir laaretz veladarim aleha berachamim, uvetuvo machadesh b'chol yom tamid ma'ase bereshit. Marabu ma'asecha Adonai. Kulam bechoch ma asita, mal aha aret kinya necha, tit barach adonai lohenu al shevach ma aseya decha, ve al me ore or she asita, yefa arucha sela, or chadash al tion ta ervenis, ke kulanu mehera le oro, baruch ata adonai, yotzer ha me orot. So the Yotzer Or that we have just prayed is another very, very beautiful passage and one which we have learned in some of our classes. It contains in it just the feeling of wonder at the world. We say, thank you, God, that uh, you, you make light and darkness, that you distinguish between the two, and that every day you illumine this world with light and warmth. Every day the sun rises. Every day we walk outside and see the rays of light around us. Yesterday, I was lucky. I got to have a, a, a pretty early morning walk about uh, uh, 10 past seven, I think it was. Uh, I went to the zoo lake uh, with my lovely dog. And there at the zoo lake, it was pretty cold. There was still uh, frost on the grass, but the sun was up and the light was shining through the trees. And there you could see, you know, sometimes you can see the rays of light themselves. Uh, you're not just in the light, you see the light. Uh, and there were the rays of light shining through the trees and illuminating these little icicles on the grass. And it was yet another occasion to recite the Yotzer Or and to say in particular, this very beautiful line. tamid Oh God, you renew every day the act of creation. Every day, the world is made anew. Creation happens every day. Ma rabu ma asecha Adonai, kulam bechochma asita, mal aha aret kinyanecha. How great are your works, O God. You have made each one with wisdom. 
the world is filled with your wonders. And truly, when you see a bird that has migrated all the way from Europe, or when you see a little insect that against all odds manages to eke out its life and look after its babies, or when you see a flower or a leaf that has come out into the light, then truly this gives us the language to say, how great are your works, O oh God. Kulam On page 456. Ahava Rabba Aftanu Adonai Eloheinu Chem La Gadol Abiterach Amalta Aleinu Ba'avur Avotenu Be'imotenu Shabbat Chubacha Utelam Deim Chukhe Chayim Ken Techaneinu Utelam Deinu Hamrachem Rachem Aleinu Betem Bilibenu Lehavinu Lehaskil Lishmo Alil Mod Ulelamed Lishmo Belasot Unakayem Et Kol Divrei Talmud Torah Techa Be'ahava Baha Erin Enu Betorah Techa Veda Beit Libenu Bemitzvot Techa Ve'yached levavenu la'ahava u'liyira et shemecha ve'lo nevosh le'olam va'ed ki v'shem kotshecha ha'gadol v'hano rabba tachnu nagi levanis mecha b'shu'atecha ki el po'el yeshu'ot ata u'vanu v'chata v'kerev tano l'shem ha'gadol se'la ve'emet le'hodot l'cha u'liyached ha'cha ve'ahava baruch ata Adonai ha'bocher be'amo Yisrael ve'ahava and that brings us to one of the central prayers of every Jewish service, the Shema, which we recite morning and evening on page 458. <coughs> it is traditional to cover your face with your right hand. You cover your eyes as you recite the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod malchuto leolam va'ed. On page 460. Ve'ahavta et Adonai lohecha b'chol levavcha u'b'chol nafshecha u'b'chol me'odecha. Ve'hayu ha'devarim ha'ele asher anochim b'tzavcha hayom al levavcha. Ve'shinan tam levanecha v'dibarta bam. Ve'shivtecha b'veitecha u'b'lechtecha v'aderech. Ubeshoch becha, ubekumecha, uke shar tam leot alia decha, beha yulusot of hot ben en necha, uke tak tam al mezuzot be techa, uvish arecha. On page 462. Lema antis kuruva asitem kol mitzvotai, the yetem kedoshim lelo hechem, ani adonai lo hechem asher hotseti etchem be eret mitraim, the hiot lachem lelo him, ani adonai elo hechem emet. On page 464, <clears throat> true is this eternal teaching to us, beloved and precious, awesome, beautiful, and good. The God of the universe is truly our sovereign and the rock of Jacob, our protecting shield. O oh God, you endure through all generations. Your name persists, your throne is firm, your sovereignty and faithfulness last forever. Your words live and endure, faithful and precious for all eternity. From Egypt, you redeemed us, freeing us from bondage. We know that because it's the last day of the counting of the Omer, it is now seven weeks since Pesach. It is not only on Pesach that we recall our freedom, but every day. From Egypt, you redeemed us, freeing us from bondage. For that, your beloved sang praise, exalting you. Your dear ones offered hymns, songs, praise, blessing, and thanksgiving to you as sovereign, the living and enduring God, high and exalted, great and awesome. God ever humbles the proud, raises the lowly, frees the imprisoned, redeems the afflicted, helps the oppressed answering our people when we cry out praise to god most high blessed is god and deserving of blessing in great joy moses miriam and israel responded with song to you all of them proclaiming on the shores of the sea Zur Yisrael, 
Kuma bezra Yisrael, ufedechin umecha Yehuda ve Yisrael. Go aleinu Adonai tzvaot shemo, kedosh Yisrael baruch ata Adonai. Ga'al Yisrael. So we are about to recite the Amidah, the Tefillah. There's a little uh, addition uh, for Shavuot, which we shall include. Um, I just want to acknowledge that our shul is an old building. It has a very large volume and is not easy to heat. So I hope you are all coping with the cold. It's a cold day in Johannesburg. Um, and our shul is not uh, the warmest place. But I hope uh, if you are cold, you'll just uh, come stand a little bit close to the heater. Uh, and I hope that the warmth of us all being together uh, is enough uh, to sustain us all on a, on a cold Shabbat morning. Uh, I'll ask you to rise on page 468 for the Amida. We remain standing. Uh, this beautiful passage, which reminds us that our faith is passed from one generation to the next. Le dor va dor, 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 na git god lecha, le dor va dor, 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 na git god lecha, ule netzach netzachim kedushat chanaktish, kedushat chanaktish, beshiv chacha elohenu. Me pinu lo yamosh, lo yamosh, le olam va ed varuch atadonai ha el hakadosh. On page 478. And this is where we uh, have an addition for the Chag of Shavuot. 
אתה וחטאנו מכל העמים, אהבת אותנו ורצית בנו, ורוממתנו מכל הלשונות, וקידשתנו במצוותיך, וקרבתנו מלכנו לעבודתך, לעבודתך, בשמך הגדול והקדוש עלינו. קראת ותיתן לנו אדוני אלוהינו באהבה שבתות למנוחה מועדים לשמחה חגים וזמנים לששון את יום חג השבועות הזה זמן מתן תורתנו מקרא קודש זכר ליציאת מצרים You have chosen us O oh God in love and favor making us holy through your mitzvot and drawing us close to your service, that through us your great and holy name may become known in all the earth. In your love, eternal our God, you have given us Shabbat to rest, feasts of gladness and seasons of joy. You have given us the Shabbat and this festival of Shavuot, the season of our receiving the Torah, to unite in worship and to recall the Exodus from Egypt. On page 480, אלוהינו ואלוהי אבותינו יעלה ויבוא ויזכר זכרוננו וזכרון כל עמך בית ישראל לפניך לטובה לחן ולחסד ולרחמים לחיים ולשלום ביום חג השבועות הזה זוכרנו אדוני אלוהינו בו לטובה אמן ובוקדנו בו לברכה אמן והושיענו בו לחיים Amen. This day remember us for well-being. Amen. This day bless us with your nearness. Amen. This day help us to live a fuller life. Amen. On page 482. Bestow upon us the blessing of your holy festivals that and may we so celebrate them as to be worthy of your blessings. O God and God of our ancestors, find favor in our Shabbat rest. Make us holy with your mitzvot. Let your Torah be our way of life. May our rest on this day be pleasing in your sight. Satisfy us with your goodness. Gladden us with your salvation. Purify our hearts to serve you in truth. May your Shabbat tot and holy festivals lovingly and willingly remain our heritage. And let us celebrate them with love and favor and joy so that all Israel, hallowing your name, may have cause to rejoice. Baruch atah Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat, Yisrael, the has my name on page 484, the Ritzek. Ritzek Adonai Eloheinu b'amcha Yisrael u'tfilatam b'ahavat kabel u'tehil reton tamid avodat Yisrael amecha el karov l'chol korav p'nei al'avadecha b'choneinu shafoch ruchacha aleinu v'techezena eineinu v'shokha l'tzion b'rachamim baruch ata Adonai ha'machazir shchinato l'tzion on page 486, a prayer that we pray every day, but truly one of the most beautiful and revelatory prayers. It is the prayer of gratitude. It starts with the word modim, which comes from the word toda, lohodot, to thank. Uh, it is, a, it is a, an expression of our gratitude to God. מודים אנחנו לך שאתה הוא אדוני אלוהינו ואלוהי אבותינו לעולם ועד. חיינו מגן ישנו אתה הוא לדור ודור. נודה לך ונספר תהילתך על חיינו המסורים בידיך ועל נשמעותינו הפקודות לך ועל ניסיך שבכל יום עמנו ועל נפלאותיך וטובותיך שבכל עת ערב ובוקר וצהריים. הטוב כי לא חלו רחמיך והמרחם כי לא תמו חסדיך מעולם קיבינו לך ועל כולם יברך ותרום שמך מלכנו תמיד לעולם ועד וכל החיים יודו חסלה ויהללו את שמך באמת האלה שועתנו ועזרתנו סלע ברוך אתה אדוני הטוב שמך ולך נאה להודות And the final prayer of the Amidah before the silent prayer is the prayer for peace, sim, shalom, page 490. Reva already mentioned at the beginning of the service the terrible conflict, which I think is on its 100th day now, yeah, 101st it is, day, day. Uh, in Ukraine, the attack on uh, Ukraine by Russia, um, the suffering of so many people there. Uh, we think of them, we think of of other conflicts around the world, uh, conflicts in Yemen, uh, other conflicts which may not be wars, but nonetheless are closer to home. 
uh, the large numbers of people in South Africa who are, are murdered every day, the victims of gender-based violence, all the ways in which the peace that God has given us is disturbed. And we pray truly that more people will be able to enjoy peace and that the peace that reigns in the high heavens will indeed be allowed to reign here on earth because it is not God who has to create war or peace on earth. It is us. God already gave us the peace that we awaken to every day. It is us who disturb that peace for each other. Sim shalom tova uvracha, chen vachesed verachamim, alenu vel kol Yisrael, amecha. Barkenu avinu kulanu kechad beor pal.
freed from Egypt. We were freed from Egypt to receive the Torah. We were freed from Egypt so that we would enter into a covenant. Our freedom is not only for the sake of itself. Of course, freedom is important. Uh, we were freed from slavery. But we are taught in Judaism, freedom by itself is not enough. Once we are free, what are we free to do? Not just pursue our own desires, but free to enter into a covenant with God, to take upon ourselves the mitzvot, to live in a particular way. We are freed from Egypt in order to receive the Torah. When we receive the Torah, ironically, what do we do by receiving and accepting the Torah? We restrict our freedom. If we didn't receive the Torah, we could do whatever we like. When we receive the Torah, we restrict our freedom. We restrict our freedom because we accept a system of rules and obligations. In that way, we restrict our freedom. We attain our freedom in order to enter into a covenant with God, to behave in a particular way, to take, out the, take on the work of tikkun olam, the repair of breaches in the world. We accept the Torah and we do so willingly, as you will hear just now in the Parsha. We accept the Torah willingly and we take upon ourselves obligations because we understand that it is not enough to be free to pursue our own desires. Rather, we are free to enter into a partnership with God, to behave in particular ways towards ourselves, towards other human beings, towards the natural world, the environment, towards animals. We take upon, we attain our freedom in order to receive the Torah. Mm -hmm. We attain our freedom in order to take on a particular kind of life. And that is why Shavuot is the festival of weeks, because it is tied to Pesach. It is man, matan, uh, uh, it is the time in which we are given the Torah. Mm -hmm. What we are going to read now, which is in fact tomorrow's reading, but we're going to do it today, is the giving of the Torah. And when the Torah was given, the first thing that was given, and you'll hear it, is the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments being the most basic obligations that we have. And when we finished reading the Parsha, we'll say a little bit more about the Ten Commandments and why they are set up in the way that they are. For now, we continue with the service of the reading of the Torah, page 494. <laughs>
Spanish. So now we are going to remain standing until such time as the Torah has been seated. And it is our tradition, as you heard Marian start to sing Shalom Aleichem. So please join us. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi Elion, Mimelech, Malachi Hamelachim, Hakadosh Baruch. Oh, Hela Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi. be seated. So we are going to read today the parasha for Shavuot, which is uh, from the book of Exodus, uh, chapters 19 and 20. Um, we are going to have three aliyot today. And as you will hear, we are reading a very uh, significant uh, part of the Torah. In fact, we are reading about the giving uh, of the Torah. Reva, I'm going to ask you to come and hold here. And then when we start reading the English, it's going to be there. Thank you. Until Will you hold that for me? Thank you. Okay, so let's just find the place. Just finding the place to start by your red. Okay. Sorry, I think we've, I've lost the aliyot. Yeah, so here they are. It's me, I put them away. Thank you. Ya Amod Baruch Ben Alexander Rishon. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Bach Rabbanu Mikol Ha'amim Natan Lalu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Vayered Adonai El Har Sinai El Rosh Ha'har Vayikra Adonai Lemoshe El Rosh Ha'har Vaya al Moshe, Vayomer Adonai el Moshe. Red haed ba'am, pen yeher su. Al Adonai, lir ot, ve nafal, mimenu, rav. Vagam ha kohanim, ha nigashim el Adonai. Yit kad shu, pen yefrots bahem Adonai. Vayomer Moshe el Adonai, lo yuchal ha'am, la alot. El Har Sinai, Ki Ata, Haedota, Bene Haedota Beni, Beno Le Mor, Higabel, El Haha, Hagbel, El Et Hahar, the Kad, the Kid Chateau, Vayomer Elav Adonai, Lech Red, the Alita Ata, the Aharon Imecha, the Hakohanim, the Haam Al Yehersu, La Alot. El Adonai, pen yefrot bam, va yered Moshe, el ha'am, va yomer a lehem. 
ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נטר בתוכנו. ברוך אתה אדוני, נותן התורה. אמן. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain. And Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also that come near to the Lord sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou didst charge us, saying, Set bounds upon the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Go, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people and told them. Thank you, Reva. And as you've just uh, uh, heard from Reva, uh, what is happening at this stage is that the people are gathered at the foot uh, of Mount Sinai. The people are gathered at the foot of Mount Sinai, and there is a great uh, deal of uh, awe uh, happening. Uh, God has appeared in a cloud. The mountain itself is trembling, perhaps like a volcano, and is spewing. Uh, the people have been told, stay back a little bit from the mountain, and only Moses and Aaron and the Kohanim will go up to receive the Torah. Mm -hmm. So everybody is at the foot of Mount Sinai in a state of awe and trembling and awaiting to hear uh, the voice of God. Over to you. Have you done the bracha after? Yes, done. Yes. Okay, so now uh, don't go away, please, Brian. So uh, 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 Brian has come up and he has blessed the Torah. Uh, and in so doing, he has honored the Torah. And so we as a congregation also uh, honor him. And not only uh, do we honor Brian uh, for uh, his uh, coming up to the Torah, uh, but we also honor him for being such a precious and valuable member of our community. Brian is a, a person of great learning. He's a person uh, of great warmth and friendliness. Uh, he is a veteran of our shul. Uh, he has been coming to the shul longer than I have, for sure. Uh, and he is so much part uh, of the life of Temple Israel. And it is really an honor for me to be able to offer uh, Amisha Berach for Brian. And I'll ask you all to answer Amen at the end of the Hebrew and the English. Come to me. Amisha Berach, Avotenu, Imotenu, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Vlea. Who you are, it baruch ben Alexander. Ba for she alal if God am a convert if God had Torah. It's a hard thing to rush for who you are, 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 Baruch ben Alexander, since he has come up to the Torah in honor of God and the Torah, may he merit from the Holy One of Blessing, protection, rescue from any trouble or distress, and from any illness, minor or serious. And may God send blessing and success in his every endeavor together with all Israel. And let us say together, Amen. Amen. Ya Amod, Ya Akov Ben Yonatan Shani. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Ba'ed. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר בחר בנו מכל העמים, ונתן לנו את תורתו. ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. 
And so now uh, what is about to happen is that God is about uh, through Moses to speak directly to the people of Israel. Mm. It is for this moment that we are released from Egypt. Vayedaber Elohim et kol hadvarim ha'ele lemor. Anochi Adonai Elohecha asher hotzeiticha me'eretz Mitzrayim mi'beit avadim. Lo yihye lecha Elohim acherim al panai. Lo ta'ase lecha pesel v'chol temuna. Asher b'shamayim mi'ma'an v'asher ba'aretz mitachat v'asher ba'mayim mitachat la'aretz. Lo tishtachave lahem v'lo te'avdem. Ki anochi Adonai Elohecha el kone poked avon avot al banim v'al shleishim v'al reveim l'sonai v'osei chesed l'alafim l'ohavai u'le shomrei mitzvotai. Lo tisa et shem Adonai Elohecha l'ashav ki lo yenake Adonai et asher yisa et shmo l'ashav. Zachor et yom hashabbat lekotsho. Sheshet yamim ta'avod v'asita kol melachtecha. Uvayom hashvi'i shabbat l'adonai elohecha. Lo ta'ase kol malacha. Ata uvincha ubitecha. Avdecha v'amatcha ubehemtecha. V'gercha asher v'sharecha. Ki sheshet yamim asa adonai et hashamayim v'et ha'aretz. את הים ואת כל אשר בם, וינח ביום השביעי, על כן ברך אדוני את יום השבת ויקדשהו. כבד את אביך ואת עמך ואת אמך, למען יאריכון ימיך על האדמה אשר אדוני אלוהיך נותן לך. לא תרצח, לא תנאף, לא תגנוב, לא תענה ברעך עד שקר, לא תחמוד בית רעך, לא תחמוד אשת רעך, ועבדו ואמתו וסורו וחמורו וכל אשר לרעך. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת, וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו. Baruch Atah Adonai Nutein HaTorah. Amen. Now Brian is quite right during the um, reading of the uh, of the Ten Commandments. Actually, it is traditional to rise. So we're about to read them in English. So please rise. English, correct. Good. So we start here and we go to the end of the, of the, of the um, Ten Commandments. We're starting here. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image, nor any manner of likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down unto them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto the thousandth, thousandth generation of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any manner of work thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within the gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and, and the sea and all that is in it and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. 
Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his maidservant, nor his manservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy neighbors. Thank you very much, Reva. Uh, you may be seated. And so we have all now heard uh, the Ten Commandments, the very first act of the giving uh, of the Torah, and we'll speak more about it just now. Now, it's not by coincidence that we call mm. Jacob uh, for this Today. particular aliyah. Uh, this is indeed one of the most important passages uh, in our entire uh, Torah. Uh, this is the moment at which we uh, are given the Torah. And, uh, you know, uh, Jacob is normally the one to arrange the aliyot. And I'm sure you've all noticed that he never arranges an aliyah for himself. Um, and today we uh, had a bit of a, a conspiracy, if I can put it that way, to make sure that, uh, that Jacob uh, receives an aliyah. And thanks to all my co-conspirators um, uh, for a very good reason. And that is that it was uh, Jacob's birthday uh, this week, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we wanted to honor Jacob the week of his birthday, but also to honor him with this particular aliyah, uh, the giving uh, of the Torah, uh, because Jacob, uh, in many ways, is the backbone of our congregation. Um, in particular, he is the person who, behind the scenes, hmm. makes it possible uh, for so much to happen. Uh, ma many different uh, aspects of our shul uh, depend entirely uh, hmm. on Jacob and on his consistent uh, and unflinching um, uh, commitment to our shul. Um, and uh, in particular, let me mention that the entire electronic uh, basis of our shul, all of the Zoom services that we have enjoyed since the beginning of COVID, Jeez. it is all due to Jacob. And he yeah. is always there in the background, uh, uh, managing everything uh, for all of us amongst many other tasks that he yeah. takes on for our shul. And so for that reason, and because he has come up to the Torah, we offer uh, a Misha Berach uh, for, uh, for Jacob. Misha Berach, Avotenu Imotenu Avraham Yitzhak Yaakov, Sarah Utarach Emelea'ah, Hu Yivarech, Yaakov Ben Yonatan. Baavur she ala lechvod hamakom belechvod hatora bisachar ziyakadosh baruchu yatsirehu yatsilehu mikol tsara betuka mikol nega umachala biyishlach bracha vhatzlacha bechol maasei adav im kol Yisrael benomar Amen. May the one who blessed our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah bless Yaakov ben Yonatan since he has come up to the Torah in honor of God and the Torah. May he merit from the Holy One of blessing, protection, rescue from any trouble or distress, and from any illness, minor or serious. And may God send blessing and success in his every endeavor. As we say together, together Amen. with all Israel, as we say together, Amen. Amen. Ya amod baruch ben Moshe shlishi. And so now we have uh, heard the Ten Commandments. We have uh, received, in a sense, the very first uh, 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 utterances of God in the passage of giving of the Torah. And we now uh, conclude uh, with what happens directly uh, after that. We're going to go from the end there. If you'll just turn over, Reva, I'll show you. We're going to go up to. Um, I'm just going to go up to there. Baruch Ed Adonai Amavora. Baruch Adonai Amavorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Elahenu Melech Olam Ashi Bachabanu Mikol Ha Amim. The Natan Lanu Etorato 
Barukata Janano Tainha Torah. Amen. Behol Ha'am, Roim, et ha kolot, ve et ha lapidim, ve et kol ha shofar, ve et ha har a shen, ve yar ha'am, ve ya anu, ve ya am du merachok, ve yomru el moshe, diber ata imanu, ve nishma, ve al yedaber imanu elohim, pen namut. Vayomer Moshe el ha'am al tira'u ki la'avor nasot etchem ba ha'elohim uva'avor tihye yir ato al pnechem levil ti ta tach ta'u levil ti tach ta'u v'yamod ha'am merachok u'moshe nigash el ha'arafel asher Sham ha Elohim. Baruchata Adonai lahenu melech haolam, ashi natan lanu torat emit, v'chayai olam nata betuchenu. Baruchata Adonai notain ha Torah. Amen. Amen. And all the people perceived the thunderings and the lightnings, and the voice of the horn and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us, speak with us lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God is come to prove you and that his fear may be before you, that ye sin not. And the people stood far off but Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Ye yourselves have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver or gods of gold. Ye shall not make unto you. Thank you. And so now we have uh, uh, heard that uh, straight after the giving of the Torah, the people are afraid, uh, they are trembling, they say to, they, they say to Moses, please don't, don't let God speak to us directly in case we die. This is, it is overwhelming, it's too much, we are afraid. And the, the mountain itself is trembling and smoking. And the people say, Rather you speak to us, Moses, you be God's intermediary. Mm -hmm. And so Moses goes up with Aaron and the Kohanim uh, to continue uh, to receive the Torah, from which they will then come back. Uh, and we will then go on to the next episode uh, of, uh, um, of the story of the giving of the Torah. Mm -hmm. But before we continue, we are going to make a Mishaberach for Baruch ben Moshe. It's really wonderful that you've been coming so regularly to our shul. That you are, uh, that you are taking on the work of Lador Vador, passing on our faith from one generation to the next, and we offer a, a, a Misha Berach uh, for you as you have come up so beautifully to the Torah. You read Hebrew beautifully, uh, and uh, we are so proud to have you in our shul. Misha Berach, Avotenu Bimotenu Abraham Yitzchak Yaakov, Sarari Karafen Belea, Uyevarech Baruch Ben Moshe. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless Baruch ben Moshe, since he has come up to the Torah in honor of God and the Torah. May he merit from the Holy One of Blessing protection, rescue from any trouble or distress and from any illness, minor or serious. And may God send blessing and success in his every endeavor. And let us all say together, Amen. 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 Shikach. 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 Thank you. We have completed our reading of the Torah. We are about to lift the Torah. We have in our congregation a person whose uh, traditional task it is to lift the Torah to, to do the work of the Hagba'ah. Ya Amod Levi Ben Noach Hagba'ah. 
And as we see the Torah, we acknowledge that this is indeed the Torah given by God through the hand of Moses. I'm sure you all see as Solo lifts that Torah, you see the particular shape of the writing in the Torah today. And that is the Ten Commandments, which are set out in a particular way, not just uh, uh, running into uh, uh, the text as we normally do. And I think very significant for us today to point to the Torah and to say, Vizota Torah, and this is the Torah, I show some more share that Moses put before us, Nifnei Bnei Yisrael al pi Adonai, through the mouth of God, Bayad Moshe, and the hand of Moses. And indeed, that is what we have just read, that it was through the mouth of God that the Torah came down, but it came down through the hand of Moses. And here we are, several thousand years later, still reading that Torah every week, still taking it into our lives and into our hearts, still pointing to it every week and saying, this is the Torah that Moses gave uh, to the people of Israel. And so we have completed the reading of the Torah. We go on now to the blessing before the Haftorah. Uh, it's a very interesting Haftorah this morning. It comes to us from the first book of uh, Ezekiel. Um, and the blessing for the Haftorah is on page 512. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. I've been reminded. Uh, thank you very much. If we need to do the Misha Berach for healing. Marion, will you come up, uh, please? So, uh, so please forgive me for having uh, left out the, the, the Misha Berach for healing. And thank you so much for the reminder. So on page 511, uh, you may be seated, since the Torah is seated. On page 511, uh, it is a tradition in our shul to offer a Misha Berach for healing. That is to say, for, to pray for healing uh, for all those who may be in need uh, of healing. And Marion is going to read the names of those who we are particularly praying for today. Today, we are thinking of Maria Atkinson, Michael and Fab Cohen, Ray Blecher, Anna and Philip Aviv, Elaine Katz, Elaine Dragsund, Gwyn Griffiths, Melvin Stern, Lawrence Foreman, Victor Reitzek, Peter Joffe, Doris Krinsky, Kay Della Dazilla, Delaire, and Jean Alburn. And anybody else? So, thank you, Marion. Are there any other names that anybody else would like to call out? People who are in need of healing? And if you are on Zoom and you have a name of somebody, you can put it into the chat or you can call it out. Call out the man. Siegel, thank you. Thank you. So for all of those people, and indeed for all who are ill, we offer the following. Amen. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal all those who are ill, and in particular those whose names we have just mentioned. May the blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for their health to be restored and their strength to be revived. May God swiftly send them a complete renewal of body and spirit. And let us say together, Amen. 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 May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say, Amen. Amen. 
We go on now to the reading of the Haftorah. What is the difference between the Torah and the Haftorah? The Torah is the five books of Moses. The Haftorah comes to us from one of the prophets. Uh, uh, every Pasha, so every week's Torah reading is twinned with uh, uh, another reading from one of the books of the prophets. Today it comes to us from the book of Ezekiel, uh, the first uh, chapter of which Reva will read to us the first uh, 14 verses. The blessings for the reading of the Haftarah, page 512. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohenu Melech Haolam Asher Bachar Asher Bachar Bin Beim Tovim Veratza Vedivrehem Hanemarim Beemet Baruch Ata Adonai Habocher Batura Uv Moshe Avdu Uv Yisrael Amo Uvin Vie Haemet Vat Zedek Amen. Now it came to pass in the thirteenth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Cheba that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God in the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehokaim's captivity. The word of the Lord came expressively unto Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land in the Chaldeans by the river Cheba, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked and behold, a stormy wind came out of the north a great cloud with fire flashing up so that a brightness was all around and out of the midst thereof as the color of electrum out of the midst of the fire and out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance they had the likeness of a man and everyone had four faces and every one of them had four wings and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. Wow. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. And as for their faces and wings of them four, their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went, they went everyone straight forward. And for the likeness of their faces, they had the face of a man, and they had four had the face of, of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four had also the face of an eagle. Thus where their faces and their wings were stretched upward, two wings of every one, were joined one to the other and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward whither the spirit was to go, they went. They turned not when they went. And for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearances were like coals of fire, burning like the appearance of torches. It flashed up and down among the living creatures and they were brightness to the fire and one of the fire and out of the fire went forth lightning and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Thank you so much, Reva. That's so, so much. Uh, it, it is a very interesting passage, the first yes. book of Ezekiel. And if you continue with the, the with that first uh, chapter and uh, continue with the, with the book of Ezekiel, uh, you will find that Ezekiel was a person who saw great visions of God, mm. very visual. Um, there are uh, people who have tried to depict this in artworks, um, very detailed uh, uh, depictions, uh, very detailed visions. And what is interesting to me is that uh, uh, those of you who know a little bit about, uh, about sand rock art, about Bushman rock art in mm. South Africa will know that the shamans uh, of that community had visions uh, and the, uh, in which there were um, uh, sacred creatures who were often a mixture uh, between humans and animals. Mm. Uh, and here we have also in our tradition, these creatures um, that had a particular appearance. They were half ox, they were half human. They had a foot that was straight, but the head, the, but the bottom of it was cleft like the, 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 the foot of a calf. Um, so the, those are the visions of Ezekiel. And I think the reason it is chosen as the Haftorah for this Parsha is because of the sense of awe uh, and because of the um, uh, sense of wonder. Uh, which our people also felt 
uh, when they stood at the bottom of Mount Sinai. The blessings for the uh, after the Haftarah on page 512. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech, sorry, page 513. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Tzur kol alamim, Tzadik b'chol adorot, Ha'el ha'neeman ha'omer ve'oseh, Hamdaber umkayem, Shekol dvara ve'met v'atzedek. And here is a special insertion for Shavuot. Al ha'torah ve'al ha'boda, Ve'al hanvi'im ve'al yom ha'shabat hazeh, we are about to return the Torah to the ark, but before doing so, we will have the readings uh, and prayers for our community. We have four of them, and I'll call upon those who've been asked to read prayers for our community to please come up onto the bench. Jennifer, please come up. Marion, Louis, Martin, prayer for Israel. Thank you. Prayer for Israel. God, we ask your blessing on the land of Israel and all its inhabitants. Israel, our ancestral home, has been flowering and developing for more than 70 years. Jewish immigrants, many of them refugees from persecution, have built a dynamic society in our ancient land. We thank you for these blessings, and yet we pour out our hearts in sorrow for the conflict that has gripped the country for so long. We remember the holy... The land is holy and all those who are descended from Abraham, Jews, Muslims, Christians alike, as we all pursue your service, help us to remember that there is one God and one human race. We pray for a day when peace, the most precious and elusive of your gifts, may reign in Israel and the entire region, and that all the inhabitants of the land may live together in harmony and mutual respect in the words of our tradition, or Hastash Al Zion Tair Veniske Kulanu Mehira Le Oro. May a new light shine upon Zion, and may we all soon merit its radiance. Amen. 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 Right. Um, what do you do? Pray for South Africa. God, we ask your blessings on our country, South Africa, and all its people. In South Africa, we experience the best and worst of the human spirit. We have plumbed the depths of racism, violence, and injustice. We have solved the hearts of grace, reconciliation, and renewal. The Talmud tells us that we are partners in the act of creation. In South Africa, you have created a magnificent land. We experience your power in the splendor of the mountains, the breathtaking beauty of the oceans, and the majesty of the animals. Having been freed from the shackles of apartheid, our task now is to work together to fashion a society based on justice, equality, and opportunity. Teach us to practice humility and to treat one another with generosity and respect. And my, may the day come soon when the fruits of our land may be shared abundantly by all. God, we ask you to bless our elected leaders with wisdom and strength. Remind them each day of their sacred responsibilities to our people, to our history, and to our constitution. At this time of international crisis, we especially ask your blessings. Guide our leaders with wisdom and compassion and help them to lead us to the postures of good health, solidarity, and peace. Amen. 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 Shukar. 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 Pray for the animals. Hear our humble prayer, O oh God. For our friends, the animals, especially for animals who suffer, for animals that are overworked, underfed, and cruelly treated, 
for all wistful creatures in captivity that beat their wings against the bars for any that are hunted or lost or deserted or frightened or hungry for all that must be put to death we must entreat them all thy mercy and pity and for those who deal with them we ask a heart of compassion gentle hands and kindly words make us ourselves to be true friends to animals and so to share the blessings of the merciful amen amen, amen. amen. thank you so all beings, by the children of this community, learning these passions from us, love, for the Torah, devotion, in prayer, and support of the needy. May may we guide with integrity, and may our leadership be in your service. May those who teach and nourish us be blessed with a satisfaction, and may we appreciate their time and their devotion. Bless us with the fruits of our wisdom and understanding and may our efforts bring fulfillment and joy. <laughs> we will get to that point where you can't read about our glasses. Um, I'll ask you to rise now as we return the Torah to the Ark, page 514. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful uh, day here in Johannesburg, a little cold, uh, but here we are on Shavuot morning. We've said a lot already, we've studied together. Uh, this evening, um, rather than doing uh, Mincha Havdalah, uh, because they, they are also regional services for Shavuot, um, uh, and they are they're available on Zoom and also uh, in person at uh, Beit Emanuel, uh, rather than doing the Mincha Havdalah, in any case, one doesn't do a Havdalah when one is going into a um, a hug. 
um, what we're going to do is we're going to do just 45 minutes of learning. Uh, those who feel they've already done uh, learning for today, um, that's fine. But those who would like to join on Zoom later on at 5.30, just for 45 minutes, uh, we'll do a little bit of Torah learning together, uh, as is the tradition uh, on Shavuot. We won't stay up all night, but at least from half past five to quarter past six, we'll do it. And that will be learning. on our Zoom. And that will be on, on our Zoom. On the Temple Israel Hillbrow Zoom, so please join us. On the Temple Israel, that's on the Temple Israel Hillbra Zoom at half past five, that we will do Sounds our that we'll do our, um, our, our, a little bit of learning together. And then those who want to join the Shavuot services can do so uh, on the Beit Emmanuel uh, Zoom. There are a lot of Shavuot services from tonight and tomorrow, and we'll be sending out to you for those on Zoom, and you can choose which you would like to join. Not for you, Jennifer, you only come in real life. Person. Yeah. Or if you wish to join, you'll be you'll be most welcome. So before we uh, continue with the Alenu and and, and, and the Can't Kaddish, how, how's that? How's that? Better, Jennifer? Better? Before we continue with the, the conclusion of our service, what we are going to do briefly is just say a few words uh, about the Parsha that we heard, the Ten Commandments. Now, the Ten Commandments in many ways, can you hear? Can you hear? The, 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 the Ten Commandments in many ways is the uh, best known, one of the best known passages of the entire Torah. And as we heard, there's this great scene that builds up of the people standing at the foot of Mount Sinai waiting to receive the Torah. And the mountain is smoking and there is lightning, there is a cloud uh, in which God appears. Uh, and then Moses is called onto the mountain and God speaks these words to him. So what are the fundamentals uh, of Torah? Uh, is the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments have indeed traveled far and wide. They were given to us as Jews at the foot of Mount Sinai. We, were, we attained our freedom in order to receive them. Of course, they are not the only mitzvot in the Torah. They are 10. We know that in the Torah, there are 613 uh, 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 commandments. Um, so uh, the, it is by no means the beginning and end of Torah, but they are the fundamentals of Torah. And what I think is very interesting about the Ten Commandments is that the commandments start off where God speaks about himself and his relationship with each one of us. And really what that is about, uh, that is about uh, establishing uh, first things first. So the beginning uh, of the Ten Commandments, uh, God tells us that, uh, that he is our God and that we are his people, and that we should not worship uh, any other gods uh, beside him. Um, so we uh, here, first of all, we start at the fundamental, which is the relationship between us and God, uh, because that is what establishes us in this world. Once we are in a relationship with God as individuals and as a people, that in a sense defines uh, everything else. So God says, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. And then God, God goes on to say, Hashem goes on to say, you shall not make any idols. You shall not make any graven images. You shall not bow down uh, to them. And then God says something very interesting. God says that uh, for those who abandon uh, this covenant, uh, there are consequences. And in fact, God says, I am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. In other words, that misdeeds that we may do in this lifetime could even affect our descendants for three or four generations. And I think we see that in history, that the misdeeds of people, even the next generation and the next, we feel it. Here we are a generation after apartheid, but we still feel it. But then God goes on to say uh, that God shows mercy to the thousandth generation of them that love me and keep my commandments. So it may be that our misdeeds echo for three or four generations, but our good deeds will echo for a thousand generations. A thousand generation is a thousand times 30, 30,000. Our good deeds can affect our descendants for 30,000 generations. And who knows if the goodness and blessings in our lives do not come to us uh, because of something that our ancestors uh, did. 
we then go on to be told about the Shabbat. So all of this is still now about our relationship with God. Uh, and when we come to the Shabbat, we're still learning about our relationship with God because we are told that we keep the Sabbath day not only to rest, but also to focus on our relationship with God. Uh, and from there, we then shift into what I think is then the second part of the commandment, and that is our relationship with other people. Because we say that uh, God uh, um, uh, rested on the seventh day, and as a result, we also should rest. But not only us, it is not only us that should rest, but everybody has to rest. Uh, it says very clearly, you shall not do any work, neither you, your son or your daughter, and neither can your employees. Your employees must also be given a day of rest. And even your animals, strangers that are within your gates, everybody, the rest is not only for us, it is for everybody, for all the people around us. And then we go on for the remainder of the 10 commandments and you see them up there on top of the uh, ark. For the remainder of the Ten Commandments, now we are talking about our relationship with other people. Honor your father and mother. Very fundamental part of life. To honor the people that ushered us into this world and that nurtured us. You shall not murder. Finished, as Reva says. We, read, we heard the statistics yesterday from the Minister of Police something like 6,000 people already murdered in South Africa this year. I think that was only the first quarter, the first three months of the year. We saw the terrible happenings in America. People going into classrooms and shooting children. We see the scourge of gender-based violence. The Torah is clear, clear as day. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. If you enter into a committed and loving union with another person, you don't betray them. You shall not steal. And you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Imagine how devastating it is if you have to go to court. And somebody who really does know what happened tells the court something else. Imagine that feeling. You go to court waiting for the truth to come out. And the person who knows the truth lies. Imagine how that feels. That is bearing fault with this against your neighbor. And finally, and this is very interesting because this is about a feeling. God commands us not to be jealous. You shall not covet. You shall not be envious. Don't be envious of what your neighbor has. Not his house, not his wife, not her husband. Uh, doesn't say that, but we add that. Uh, not her manservant, not his maidservant, not his animals, not his possessions. Do not covered. So here is a commandment about feelings. Aren't feelings just human? They are. But God knows that that feeling of envy is the beginning not only of crime, but it's also the beginning of disquiet. Because if you're constantly looking around you at what others have and you think, oh, how come I don't have that? Then there is a feeling of disquiet within you. And you will not be able to magnify the light within because you'll be so busy worrying about what others have that you do not have. So here are the Ten Commandments. We see them every time we come into the shul. They are the best known part of the Torah. Nonetheless, there is much upon which we can meditate, much that we can learn. Uh, and very important, a day for us, Chag HaShavuot, as we... Uh, as we acknowledge the covenant that we entered into with God. And not only do we acknowledge that covenant, but in a sense, we re-enter uh, into that covenant uh, every Shabbat uh, and every uh, Chag Shavuot. Uh, and so we are very blessed uh, to be able to celebrate Chag HaShavuot, the festival of weeks, Zman Matan Toratenu, the time of the giving of the Torah. We are going to conclude our service now with the Aleinu, which is on page 586. Please stand, we'll remain standing also for the Kaddish.
עלינו לשבח The flames dance and our lives are full, but as night follows day, the candle of our life burns down and gutters. There is an end to the flames. We see no more and are no more seen. And yet we must not despair, for we are more than a memory slowly fading into the darkness. With our lives, we give life. Something of us can never die. Remember, that our good deeds, according to the Torah, may yet reverberate and echo and influence a generation a thousand times removed from us. Something of us can never die. We move in the eternal cycle of darkness and death, of light and life. And Marion will read to us the names of those uh, for whom we are particularly uh, uh, praying and thinking uh, as we are about to recite the Kaddish. Today we are thinking of Dr. Simon Levine, husband of Nali Levine, Professor Robin Green, pediatric pulmonologist, and a note in from Lawrence um, Lillian Reinecker, who passed away this morning. Thank you very much. As we recite together the Kaddish prayer, thinking of those whose names we have just mentioned and all others, who we may hold in our hearts as individuals and as a community. As we recite together, Yit Gadal, Yit Kadash Shemei Rabbah, Ve'alma Dibrach Yerute Ve'am Lif Machute, V'chaye Chon Uv'yomei Chon U'v'chaye D'chol Beit Yisrael, V'agala U'v'zman Kariv V'imru Amen, Yehe Shemei Rabbah M'vorach L'olam U'lomei O'maya, Yet Barach be it Tabach be it Paar be it Roman be it Nasse, be it Hadar be it Alevi it Halal, Shame the Kudsha Brifu, Le Elam in Kolberhata, the Shirata, to Shahata and Nehemata, the Amiran be Alma be Ru Amen. Yehesh Lama Rabba min Shemaya, the Chaim, Alenu, Kol Israel, the Ru Amen. O say Shalom be Ruma. You may be seated. I'll hand over to Reva for a couple of comments and then we'll conclude with the song. Well, for those with us here in this beautiful show, it's you've done such a mitzvah by joining us. Baruch Hashem. Each Shabbat, we grow here, even by one person. And for those of you on Zoom, you do us an equal mitzvah. It is just wonderful that with this digital technology, we can enlarge our congregations and friends. Please, if you can, on Zoom this evening, join us at 530 
we are going to have a very special and unique study of Torah in honor of Shavuot with Rail. Is that right, Jacob? 5.30, and it'll be about 6.30. So for about 45 minutes and do join us we will also be sending you notices of other other shavuot services on zoom that will be taking place both here in south africa Beit Emanuel is one of them and with the world union of progressive judaism as well tonight and at various times tomorrow and of course, you are free to join should you be able to. Otherwise, we also look forward to seeing you back here next Shabbat morning and next Kabbalat Shabbat on Zoom. So that is our hybrid shul services at the moment. Again, we thank Jacob for arranging this. We thank all of you who came early to help us. Uh, and every Shabbat morning, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, we will be here with you in the shul and on Zoom. As we conclude our service, I believe, Marion, we have a wonderful bracha with, guess what? Cheesecake made by a famous chef. And the chef's name is? Jacob Hurwitz. Jacob Hurwitz. And also beautiful milk tarts bought, not made. Not yet, but bought by Marion Buffley and other goodies. So all of you in the show with us today, and we've got a wonderful crowd, please join us in the hall. And for those of you at home, on Zoom, grab anything that's milky, that lovely piece of cheesecake I hope you have, and our love and our prayers and our joy are with you. Shabbat Shalom, Chach Sameach. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. The reason that we have a, a, a dairy product on Shavuot is because we consider the Torah to be like mother's milk. We consider the Torah to be a source of nourishment, uh, just as milk is a source of nourishment. We'll end off with page 625, Adon Olam. Adon Olam, Asher Majah, Baterim Kol Yitzir Nivra, Adon Olam. Let not sad, but so cold. As I may let Shimon in cry, I don't know. I'm a shimmer. The terrible call yet to Nibra, let not sad, but so cold. As I may let Shimon in cry, may I hurry, Kiflot Hakon, Levado him love nor I don't know. The who higher, the who no Shabbat shalom and Chag Sameach. Shabbat shalom. 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 Sh
Shabbat, 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 Shalom. <laughs>